Jara, I'm so excited to have you on the podcast today. Finally, this is going to be such a good one. Yay! Thank you so much for having me. Let's do this. We're both happy dancing right now, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a killer episode because it's a topic that there's no running from. Like, we're here. It's here to stay. Like, we're going to talk about it. But also, there's so much hesitation around it and people are scared or just they're hesitant or they're just, you know, they haven't started. They don't know how to get started with just video marketing with like TikTok and all this stuff. And you are an absolute master at it. And so I'm just excited to talk about how we can just your knowledge on how we can get started with it. So basically just, we're going to dive right in with things too. So how, what is your just first piece of advice for just starting to create video content, whether that's for TikTok or Instagram or whatever that looks like? Ooh, oh my God. I could talk for an hour on this. I'm so excited. Where do we even begin? Okay. So with just starting, I think that's a really key phrase because people can feel so terrified to just start and dive in. So rather thinking like, what's my first video post or how do I make this impactful? Like just taking a step back and really looking at your video content and honestly your social media content overall from this bird's eye view. So rather than focusing so granularly on what's this post about or what's my first post going to be about is going, okay, how can I look at this like a catalog of me and what I do. And I think really looking at things like that as you continue on your social media journey is so important because then you're taking this pressure off of having to have each post perform and have so much value and talk about your biz business and share your whole story. So really looking at it from that bird's eye view of how does this all come together to represent me? Then next up, I think approaching video is similar to what your social media strategy would be, even if we're not talking about video. So I really like to start with these personal branding basics, but it's not really basic because it's, it's so foundational to who you are and what you do. And so within those personal branding um, foundations, there's a couple of elements. We have your why and your purpose. We have understanding your ideal client so that we can create content that speaks directly to them. And we also have your content pillars. And the way that I divide up the content pillars are we have your business because we get to talk about what you do and how you can help people and the services that you provide. Then we also have what I call your expertise pillars. So that's sharing different parts of your knowledge and information and, and facts and advice for whoever it is that you're trying to connect with and bring into your community. And then my personal favorite, we have your secret sauce pillar. And the secret sauce pillar is really who you are as a person. It's that authenticity, that buzzword that we've all been talking about for years now. And I like for my students and my clients to dedicate an entire pillar to that so that this unique person can come through in your content. And so this applies to all posts, but very much applies to your video posts as well. So that would be my starting philosophy as well as my starting strategy when it comes to video content. Heck yes. I love that because I was going to ask, you know, where do you even start if you like are looking at this whole thing as a catalog and, and all that, that makes, I like that analogy and just, it kind of makes sense that way. But then it's like, but what do I want that to look like? So I love that you kind of yes. broke down the parts of it to make it a little bit more bite-sized and more tangible of like, you know, just separating it into these little areas and then you yeah. can like put in bits and pieces. My question though, as I feel like I love the idea of having your secret sauce be an entire content pillar itself. I love that. I, I I think that's genius. But what do you say to the people who just maybe they don't know what it is or oh, yeah. maybe they have multiple things. Maybe they like to talk about their business a lot, but their secret sauce or something more personal about them. Maybe they have many interests. Like how do you define that and then stick with that without feeling too confined to it? I don't know. Can you elaborate on oh, yeah. that at all? 
I yeah. totally get it. And I have yeah. a solution for this. So I've been Perfect. working on this secret sauce factor for a while, not just for myself, but I have students that I've taught for the last three years. And so the, the evolution of the secret sauce, because it is, it's like, oh, we can all kind of understand what that is. Like, yeah, you yeah. are you and that should come through in your content and we should be authentic and real and pull the curtain back. But like, wait, how do we actually do that? It can be really hard. Like the concept is there, but the execution is really challenging. So where I want to start with this and how, how my secret sauce teachings have evolved is I like to categorize secret sauce into four buckets. Now they're kind of four distinct buckets, but as with everything, there can always be crossover. So take it with a little bit of grain of salt, but here's how I categorize it. We have your foundational secret sauce. We have your professional secret sauce. We have your everyday secret sauce and we have your lighthearted secret sauce. And this kind of like covers all of the areas. So if you're someone who is like, I'm not going to share my personal life on Instagram. Like I will never ask someone to reveal our all parts of themselves and like show every single detail of their life if they don't want to, or if that just perhaps doesn't make sense for their business and what they do. So we might lean a little bit more towards professional secret sauce. Like what are things in your business that you do differently than everyone else? Or what's a reason why someone would want to work with you? Or what's like a catchphrase that you say when you're shooting your clients? Like these are the, like, it, it can be that detailed and that granular. An example of perhaps I guess a little bit of crossover with my secret sauce. I uh, am known for armpit farting. Like I do it all the time on my stories. And <laughs> oh I had my a gosh, I love it. Um, I had a big keynote event uh, this past July, I think. And I brought up armpit farting and I did that on stage. Like I actually got a question from the audience about it. They're like, you've talked about armpit farting. You have can to do we, it. <laughs> can we see it? And I'm like, I cannot believe I'm, I'm about to armpit fart in front of 300 people. Now oh that is, <laughs> that is, I would say like in that lighthearted secret sauce category, yes. maybe a little bit more of like personal, like remember there's that crossover and there it is kind of seeping into my professional because it's happening live on stage. Like that's how kind of silly, wacky, small, mundane it can be. Um, but I love those four categories because it allows us to incorporate them all, pick and choose a little bit. And just before I forget, because the, the one that I didn't cover that is so crucial and kind of goes hand in hand with professional secret sauce as well, is that foundational secret sauce. So foundational to me means kind of looking at the past. It's the things that brought you to where you are today. It's the pivots, the challenges, the achievements, the aha moments, um, those shifts in your life. And so going back to that persona of someone who's like, well, I don't want to share my morning coffee and my kids and my dogs and my armpit parts or whatever it may be. You also might want to shift to that foundational secret sauce of, okay, well, I used to be a, you know, working at a restaurant as a server, but now I'm a photographer or what are like these twists and turns that you can share in your content that equate to your story and who you are as a person. So that is also secret sauce as well, even though it's a little bit more serious and um, kind of looking at the past, these all weave together to create that fabric of you to create that fabric of your secret sauce. That is just golden, Jara. And you know what? In, yeah. in my mind, what's going on <laughs> in my mind, just even thinking about stuff and questions, I'm like hearing you li just listen to you talk about this and going, what's going on in my mind is how could you not have content ideas from what you oh just my God. said? Yes. You know what I mean? Because and I think that's a huge, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no, just on top of that too, since we're kind of weaving video into this, not yeah. not only can, how can you not have content ideas, but I think that video has this magical power that it allows us to double down on all the content ideas. So before sharing a day in your life as a professional XYZ or, or a content creator or stay at home mom, whatever it is, yeah, you could share that with a photo, maybe a carousel and a caption. You could share that in your stories as well. But because of the way that short form video content is shaping up and the way that video exists and how dynamic it is and different editing styles as well, it allows you to take these ideas that maybe wouldn't have been as strong or pure, just simply would not have worked via photos and captions. And now you have like 10 different ways to share day in the life 
of XYZ. So not only is it content ideas, but then video allows you to like 10X how to represent that one single idea. Oh my gosh, exactly. And I love that you touch point on like editing style too, because you can take all these different videos and have different editing style. It's a completely different piece of content and a completely different direction. And, And I think that just goes back to Something that I struggle with, and I'm sure so many of the listeners do too, because most of us are photographers and Mm -hmm. we kind of hide behind our work and like, we like to share other people and we like to share and, you know, talk, you know, share pictures of other people and talk about our work and stuff that it's harder for us. I feel like in general, starting to make that shift, but to talk, you know, showcase ourselves and video ourselves. Cause I know for me personally, I'm like, I just go about my day and I'm like, I could have filmed my whole day today, even though it is very mundane things. And I just don't. And I think because in my mind, I'm like, it's going to take so much time for me to find a tripod or try to set up my camera and like do all these things and then, you know, have all this video and what do I do with it? So I think like mentally, it seems like this huge overwhelming task. Can you break it down for us how to make it easier? Because you are so, so good at this, Jara. Oh my goodness. Yes. So a couple, I like all these ideas. I'm like, I want to share every single one of these. I'm excited. So first of all, as a photographer, like think of all the assets that you already have. And this goes for non-photographers as well. I teach this to my Mm -hmm. students all the time. You do not necessarily always have to create new content. And that goes for the ideas. You don't necessarily have to create new ideas and you don't necessarily have to create new video or new photo every single time you go to post. So think of what you have already in your camera roll, on your hard drives, on your computers. So for, let's just say anyone doesn't have to be a photographer, think of it as B-roll. So you might have a photo, sorry, a video of you uh, walking your dog in the park, or maybe you poured a shot of coffee. Like there's so many things that already exist in your camera roll. And so the more that you can repurpose and tap into the assets you already have so that it doesn't always feel like you are having to reinvent the wheel and come up with new ideas, the better. And and people aren't going to know that it's like a super old video or something that you didn't shoot today. So that's one thing. Now, the other thing is tapping into your work as a photographer. And this once again is the beauty of short form video content. There are so many trends that show off photos, or maybe it's you in front of your camera, selfie style, holding up your camera. And it's like some sort of intro. And then the music swells and then the drop happens. And every 0.3 seconds, you're showing off your client work. Like there's those sort of summary videos or portfolio videos where, you know, a content creator can use it and show off all the awesome photos that she shot over the year or how your hairstyle has evolved over the last decade or showing off all of your client work. And it's just photos and photos back to back. So that's something I hear a lot from photographers specifically is like, well, I'm a photographer. I want to show my photos. Well, show your photos. There's so many ways, so many trends or make up your own template, your own trend, if you don't necessarily want to rely on something that's uh, current um, and, and show off your photos. So once again, those are two different ways to tap into existing content, whether it's video, whether it's photos on your phone or computer, rather than always thinking, oh, I got to go shoot something. I have to go create something right now. Totally. And that, that helps too, just like pulling any like B-roll that you have with anything. But then my question is, how do you, because you just were like rattling off all these ideas and it's like, I feel like when I'm in a good groove with like posting TikTok content and video content, it drains so much of my time and my energy and my mental energy and stuff too. And it's like, well, I got to still run a business and do all these things. And that's where I feel like it's really easy to go in waves of like inconsistency Yeah. What tips do you have to not let it completely consume every single second, but still being consistent? Like, how do you manage and how do you juggle that? Oh, it's a, it's a tough one. Not going to lie. So I think it comes first to consuming content because I think it's easy, especially on TikTok to get so sucked in to like, oh, let me just go, you know, find a trend and uh, see what's on TikTok and then I'll make it. But then you get like your doom three hours later. For, yeah. Three hours later. And you're like, wait, I still don't have anything to post. So I think one being very conscious of 
allowing yourself time to just simply be a consumer of content versus I am actively on a mission right now to find a trend, find, or perhaps it's an original piece of content that you're drawing inspiration from because I'm all about original content as well, not just trends. So separating that time a little bit. I'm just having fun. I'm, I'm letting my mind turn into mush because that's what I like to do when I scroll my TikTok content yep. versus actively seeking. And when you're actively seeking, like, create um, on TikTok, you can create a save, you can create a collection on Instagram, you can create a save folder. So being really intentional that you're not just, oh yeah, that's a good idea and keep scrolling. Like you're creating a folder um, or keeping it log in your notes of that inspiration of that trends so that maybe you're limiting that type of scrolling and being really um, just sort of maximizing that time. Um, so that's one thing. Another concept that applies to video or just social media as a whole is creating a safe goal and a stretch goal for your posting. So people are always like, I need to post, like I'm gonna be really consistent. I'm posting every single day this week. And then you do, and you do it for a week and then you're exhausted and then you don't do it again. Yep, exactly. we all have experienced yep. that. Yep. <laughs> so if you can just have be a little bit kinder with yourself, with your expectations and goals, and you might say, all right, my stretch goal for reels is five posts a week, which I actually think is quite a lot. So I'm not necessarily recommending it, but this is just for an example. Um, and my safe goal is two. And so if you're landing anywhere in that range, you should feel really good about yourself versus saying, I'm going to post seven days this week and you do it once and then you don't do it again. And then you feel really guilty and kind of shitty about it. So that safe and stretch goal is really important as well. That is awesome. And I think that just saves your mindset too of yeah. just knowing like, hey, if I post too, that's totally fine. And even too sometimes with different goals. And I know for, as photographers, like our goal is obviously like we want to book weddings and we want to do that. And so it's like if you are getting your lead generation elsewhere, not just from like reels or stuff, you might have time that you don't need to be posting as much and yes. you're still getting those leads. And you Absolutely. might have times and seasons where you need to be posting more because you know that's what's going to draw you leads. So I love, I love, love, love that strategy of like a safe and stretch all that stuff because it's going to vary for per season, per person. It's just going to look different. So I love that just of not being hard on yourself and having that range. Genius. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> I love that. Okay. And then so talk to us a little bit about, because I know some people are really hesitant on hopping on the TikTok train um, and all that stuff and how just tell us the difference, I guess, between how we should approach TikTok content and how we should approach Instagram content and what that looks like. Because I almost feel like that's overwhelming in itself because there are two different types of videos sometimes that do well. So how do we separate that or what do you suggest? Yes. Here's how I think about short form video content. If short form video content mm -hmm. is the title and then we have just for simplicity's sake, yep. TikTok and Categories. Reels underneath it. Yep. I like to think of short form video content like an ocean, if we're kind of going metaphorical here. And Reels are really just that thin top layer right at the surface and TikTok is the depths below. And what I mean by this is, Yes, Reels is short form video content, but it's just kind of dipping your toe into the water. Whereas TikTok is, the, the short form video content on TikTok is nuanced, it's complex, it's collaborative, it's self-referential. There is a culture within short form video content on TikTok that doesn't exist on Reels. There are trends that are created on TikTok and then there are trends that are like doubling down on that trend. So I know this sounds really overwhelming. I'm not saying it to be like, it's complex and so difficult. I'm saying this in that it's exciting. So if you like reels and you like short form video content on Instagram, the world just opens up even more on TikTok. But we still have the question, well, okay, how do I show up on TikTok? How do I show up on reels? I personally, don't have a huge issue with resharing some of the same content on both platforms. I think there are two potential audiences to reach on Instagram as well as TikTok. So if you're like, I want to repurpose my content, I'm going to share the same video on each platform. I don't have an issue with that to a degree, but what I would like for each person to start to just simply put your radar up. You don't have to act on this yet, but just put your radar up on TikTok 
for how people are creating content within the context of TikTok. So in a very simple way, I think duetting and stitching is a great example of that. Yes, we have remixing on reels, but people are not using it in the same way as they are on TikTok. But duetting and stitching is a whole format and culture that thrives on TikTok. So what if you come across a um, person who's like, ah, I just am so... I lack so much confidence in front of the camera. Boom, stitch that and talk about three tips for feeling more confident in front of the camera or how you pose your clients so that they feel more confident in front of the camera. To me, that's not something that you would necessarily do on Instagram. I also think there are certain styles of content that sort of to continue this conversation that thrive more on TikTok or exist only on TikTok. For example, we have the style of where you're holding 10 fingers up and you say like, put a finger down XYZ edition, put a finger down photographer edition, put a finger down influencer uh, edition. And it's sort of a storytelling format. Once again, that exists on TikTok. We don't necessarily see that on Reels. And this is what I mean by the depth of TikTok. Anything that you see on Reels, you're going to see on TikTok, but you will also see more. So becoming more aware of that as a consumer of content. And then with that radar up, go, okay, this is how I can start to create additional content that's only going to live on TikTok. That's very much created within the content and culture of TikTok. So that's how I would start to differentiate a little bit. Yeah, that makes sense. And it is, it's it's like this whole ball game in itself of like figuring yeah. out all of this and also just finding your style too. Cause I think you just don't yeah. know until you just start trying different things and, and just seeing what you like and what your audience likes, the type of content you enjoy making. I think yes. it just takes a long time to figure out your groove and your style. And it's all about trial and error. Absolutely. I'm so glad you say, said that which just drives home a very important point that you can do whatever you want to do. You will come across a bajillion different TikTok people, marketers, coaches, myself included, who will tell you to do things a certain way. And then five minutes later, you'll come across someone else saying to do the complete opposite. And you will find people, creators doing both of those things who are successful. So you'll hear someone say, you should create really short, and snappy videos. Sure, there's a reason for that because that's going to help you with retention and rewatch rate. Those are two really important metrics when it comes to your video being successful. But you are also going to find content creators who are doing long form content where it's one single shot talking to the camera, no fancy edits, no transitions. It's a over 60 seconds um, long video. I just came across this hairstylist recently who was doing kind of more TikTok-y content originally. And now he posts these sometimes almost three minute long videos of him doing really just simple consultations for his clients in his chair at the salon. And each video is getting hundreds of thousands, if not millions of views. And that's how simple it is showing this behind the scenes process of having a conversation with his client versus other people are doing hair transitions and there's 50 different cuts and locations and edits and styles and transformations. And they're both perfectly valid. So just totally piggybacking off that point of, yes, you need to find your style, but don't let someone else's advice or way that they do things convince you that your potential style is not valid or doesn't have a place within the short form video content world because it absolutely does. And there's probably someone else who exists already doing it in a somewhat similar way who's finding success and just kind of adds to that validation that there's space for you in that style and that voice. Exactly. Oh my goodness. I love that so much. And yeah, that's a huge thing too. Cause I think that's a big setback of like, if you're, if that's what's setting you back and holding you back, that's probably why you're not just doing it. And so mm. I think that's a really awesome point, like you said, to drive home. But is there, Jara, any just like last piece of advice you want to tie all this together with, whether we've talked on it or not, any last piece of advice you want to leave us with? Yeah, I think the 
the last thing that's been on my mind, especially thinking that there's a lot of photographers listening, is yeah. this idea, and it's a little bit of a term from some of the things we've talked about, but I'm like, I really want to share this. So I'm glad you asked that so I can squeeze it in. There's this I, um, concept when it comes to promoting your business on social media, and I always like to look at it through the lens of a hard sell or soft sell. And hard selling is kind of as it sounds. It's here's my business. Here's how to work with me. Here are my prices. Here's my list of services. Here are my dates where I'm available. Anything where you're making it very obvious that this is what you do and this is how someone can hire you or work with you. I know there's sometimes a lot of resistance around that. People feel like, oh, I'm being manipulative or slimy. And it's like, well, no, you're not. Like there's people who need, want to hire you and they need to know how exactly to do that yes. or what the services are that you provide and, and clarity around that is so important. But I think the beauty of social media and even more so when it comes to video content is the power of soft selling. So I still want everyone to hard sell, but consider soft selling as a little bit more of a like just so you know, I do this versus this is what I do. It's, hey, just so you know, just so you're aware, I do this. And there's so many ways that can happen, whether it's showing behind the scenes of the shoot that you are currently on or what I put in my camera bag, or here's a testimonial from a client, or here's how I pose my client or any of these things where it's like, we're talking about this because I am a photographer. So it's that kind of whisper of, hey, I'm a photographer. I have these services without necessarily saying swipe up, click the link in my bio, X, Y, Z. And as I mentioned, video content is, whether it's stories, reels, or TikTok, the perfect way to pretty much soft sell every single day. And so that's the, the last big point I want to sort of send people off with is, we want to hard sell, but also incorporate soft sell. And it's so easy to do. And you're probably doing it already. That's my TED talk. <laughs> I love it. I love it because I feel like people need to hear it because it is a scary thing. And it's like you said, but people, they know that you have a service and they want to hear about it and they want to know from it. It's almost like doing a disservice if you just don't give them any funnel to like work with you. So I think that's yes. something that people just need to hear that it's okay. And it's kind of the name of the game. Like people, it's just where we're at in, you know, in today's world and yep. people know we have services, so we shouldn't yes. try to talk about them. Right. A hundred percent. Yep. I'm with you. Yeah. I love it. That's a great, great place to end. Hopefully like that, uh, you know, set everybody off with some extra motivation, but Jared, tell us where we all can find you. Heck yeah. So I'm on social media. You can find me on Instagram and, <laughs> Instagram and TikTok and Jared Bean, but there's a dot in the middle there. So J-E-R-A dot Bean. And my website is jaredbean.com. Love that. We'll make sure to link it too so everyone can find you and watch all of your amazing videos. You are just an absolute expert at this. So we are so honored. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thank you for having me.